Hello my lovely friends, it's Eva here from Permaculture Haven. Today I want to show you how I do the pumpkin flower. And please watch to the end. And if you liked the video and the idea, how and how I do it, <laughs> don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the uh, bell so you get always notified when I'm uploading the next video. And yeah. Any questions or comments, please put them under the video uh, in the comment section below or just consider joining the discussion board on my website permaculturehaven.com and yeah, let me know what you think. So now let's get straight into it. First of all, the pumpkin needs to be washed properly and this is really important because we will be using everything so not only the flesh but also the seeds and the skin are highly nutritious and they all belong into there the next step is to remove all spots you don't like so anything what you think does not belong in there uh, will be just cut out. Now the pumpkin needs to be cut into pieces. And as you may see, I'm struggling a little. <laughs> Usually that's Seth's job, but he wasn't around, so I had to <laughs> deal with it myself. So the size of the pumpkin pieces depend on the next step how you are going to proceed. So as you may see, I've got a machine there and this is here for the grating. So I'm cutting it into the pieces uh, which will fit into the opening of the machine. But if you are, for example, grating uh, manually, so you may want to have larger pieces it will be easier for you then. So this is entirely up to you how you cut it. And as already mentioned, we are using everything. The seeds, the skin, obviously the flesh, because everything is highly nutritious and we want to have it in the flower. machine goes on and the first piece goes in <laughs> and as you may see what comes out uh, it's basically the largest setting what's possible for the grating um, we don't want to do them like a really tiny and thin pieces because it will be difficult to handle later on the pieces will stick together during the uh, dehydrating process so it's much easier if they are a little bit larger. The first batch goes onto the dehydrator uh, tray, onto the tray. And however, you don't have to have the dehydrator. You can also do the dehydrating in the oven on, a, on the lowest setting. I'm doing it in both because it was quite uh, a large amount. So I'm doing in the dehydrator and in the oven as you will see in a few seconds. When you distribute the pumpkin, you can see here roughly how you want to have it. 
The trick is the more apart you put the pieces, the quicker it will be dehydrated. Uh, yeah, obviously I've got a quite large amount of it here, even though it was uh, not the largest pump, pumpkin I have. So I have to watch the space. I had to do the grading in three batches. Yes, everything goes in. <laughs> and now because I run out of space in my dehydrator, I've got six trays there and they are uh, yeah, full. <laughs> so now I'm putting it onto the oven tray. And yes, I'm using a uh, baking paper, but I'm not throwing it away after one use. I'm using it again and again and again, like really for many, many times for all sorts of uh, vegetable which, or fruit which I dehydrate they perfectly fine for a long time okay the trays are full now up into the oven and into the dehydrator okay yeah the trays are over full <laughs> but well I didn't have more <laughs> trays so it has to be like that so I am drying it at about 60 degrees Celsius. So there are different opinions about the temperature. Some want to dry it at a lower temperature, but it takes them for ages. And I think 60 degrees, it's absolutely fine. That's the temperature you can uh, dehydrate most of the uh, fruits and vegetables. And it's absolutely fine. And when you dehydrate it in the oven, leave a little bit uh, open the door so the moisture can escape. And here my dehydrator, here I'm doing some stuff fruit as well. <laughs> it has taken uh, two days for me to dehydrate it until well everything was really nicely dry and I was dehydrating it only during the day because we have uh, solar power so I obviously want to use the Sun it is very important that that all the pieces are perfectly fine and dry otherwise your flower will get moldy so now I am double checking it and as you may see they stick a little bit together but the pieces are perfectly dry and fine for the next step. Now to the grinding machine. This is so called dry food grinder and I don't want to make any promotion for anyone because this is a no-name grinder um, I bought from one of the large online plat uh, selling platforms and basically yeah that's what you have to look for I'm pretty sure there are much better grinders out there but this was relatively cheap I bought I paid two years ago about 120 Australian dollars which is absolutely okay and the machine is a pretty large one so it's it's working perfectly fine and yeah so far I'm very happy with it and I've got the two, uh, two machines one a smaller one uh, for the spices and a larger one than the large one for the all sorts of flowers I do So the machine is on, you don't hear the noise because I have muted it <laughs> and I'm just moving it 
forward and back to help it a little. In the grinding process takes about half a minute, not longer, which is really great. So this is the quickest part of the story. <laughs> So I moved it forward a little bit so you don't get bored here. <laughs> so this is the second and the last batch of the dried pumpkin and the pumpkin flower now. So getting it all out, running it through a sieve so it will be nice and fluffy. And yes, it might get clumpy with, it, with the time when you are not using it uh, yeah, very quickly but it doesn't matter at all just take a fork mix it through in the container where you have it and it's nice and fluffy as well this is because it gets clumpy because it doesn't contain the chemicals which you have in some of the spi or most of the spices and some of the flowers you buy in the shops. Look at this beauty! <laughs> mm. Moving it into a jar now. You definitely have to have it in an eight airtight container. And yeah, it's basically ready to use for everything. You can add it into cakes, you can uh, breads, pancakes, as a f uh, food coloring, you can um, make a quick soup with it or add to any soups or thicken your sauces and, and soups and, and, and add to smoothies. So really like plenty of uh, yeah, uses and it's got only little starch so yeah it's perfect for for using as a for baking so yeah for more info check my blog on permaculturehaven.com for more info about pumpkin flour and some other <laughs> interesting content or content you might find interesting and if you like the video please don't forget to like subscribe consider joining my discussion board on the website and newsletter and so on <laughs> i hope you liked it and yeah see you next time